Hey, what's up, Liron here. I wanna share with you how edges can completely transform your watercolors, taking them to an extremely high level. So the way I see it is if you can notice things, if you can observe things, you'll be able to paint them. Not everyone will agree with this. People always fall back on it's about skills, it's about practice, it's about putting in the hours. I disagree to a large extent, okay? So let me show you something. I've been working on this large commission I have shared with you, uh, kind of talked a bit about it, and there are a lot of beautiful rocks there that are covered in snow. Uh, and it's a bit of a river situation passing through around town. And what you get is a lot of interesting uh, patterns of shadow. So some edges are hard and some edges are soft and I want to show you how that kind of a thing works. So we have a big rock here and that rock casts a shadow over this smaller rock. That's something that happens very often in that scene. So you get a cast shadow that is relatively sharp but because light is coming from that direction right here you'll you also get a smooth transition from here to there from light to dark. So you get a smooth transition as well. And these two together can completely uh, improve where you're at, just the mere noticing of it, because very often you just may not notice it. And if you can notice it, you'll be able to portray it. So for that first shadow, I'm gonna have some, it's a very simple mix here. Uh, I'm just picking up a bit of blue because it's snow and it ends up looking a little blue. So you'll get this beautiful, um, harsh transition. Now just as an extra tip, this is gonna be darker, but I don't wanna get a hard edge here once I start covering it up with darker layers. So sometimes I like to just blend the edge here, just for fun, okay? You don't have to do it, it just helps it a bit. Now, here's what we're gonna do for the rest of it. So it's, it's a stone or a rock and it's covered in snow. So I'm gonna start here just by pre-wetting and as I'm making my way towards the right and bottom, I'm gonna start adding a bit of this darker color. And that alone, the fact that you have one transition here and another transition there, and you can make it even bluer if you want to, more saturated, right? I get a stronger blue. The mere fact that you have a hard edge and a soft edge completely takes this to the next level. Now, once you add some darks, let me just do this real quick. I don't even remember where my darks are at, but let's say I have this, I, I kind of need an umber. Yes, that's good. And a bit of that same blue. And once I add that in and kind of complete the context of the scene, it will look fantastic. Okay, and maybe I blend it in and maybe behind it and I'm not allowing it any drying time. So that's another thing to note. Uh, if you don't allow it time to dry, um, things may mix together. That's fine. I, just for the purpose of this example, I want to show you. I'm just using, you know, French ultramarine or cobalt blue and burnt umber, something like that. But once I'll add the dark background, it's going to give it some meaning, right? And if you get the timing just right, you'll be able to get an interesting edge there, you see? So that's another bonus tip for you. So here's the thing. You've probably known about this. You know that edges are a thing. And look at how already it gets this beautiful look of a rock. In fact, I can start shading this large rock here to the side, adding a bit more context because all of this side of the rock is probably it's a big rock and it's all gonna be in the shadow. Maybe it has some reflected light on the side here, making it a little lighter here, actually. So kind of reverse to the previous rock, which is a fun thing, a fun occurrence to have. But so you knew this is a thing. You know there's a variety of shadows. You know that the way shadows behave, um, it, 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 some of them have a hard edge, some of them has a soft edge. The thing is, this is where most people mess up. They don't see it in the photo. But once you start seeing it, you won't be able to unsee it and you'll always want to make use of it. And that's the idea. So in your next painting, I invite you to just look at the reference photo. See if you recognize something you haven't before. And if you recognize it, you have an opportunity to include it or you have the choice 
not to include it. The idea is it's about choices. You don't have to do anything. I hope that makes sense. I want to thank you so much for watching this quick, more of a beginner oriented video. I hope it was helpful. I want to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon. Thank you so, so much. You make it possible for me to make tons of content for free for everyone. Be sure to check it out. If you have, if you're not a member, you can join, get a few perks. If you are a member, there are already some exclusive posts you may have missed. And also check out the courses. If you want to learn how to paint with complete passion, complete courage, complete freedom. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.